Good morning. Hello, there. This is Olive Hickmott, and I'm just a couple of minutes early for 11 o'clock at the moment, so I'm just going to wait and um, see how, uh, watch people coming on, and I shall endeavour to get on my phone um, a live stream so that if you want to put your comments in, that's absolutely great. And if you've got, if you've got questions, that's absolutely fab. You're welcome to put them in now and you're welcome to put them in uh, when we get going. Um, I'm just going to show you my, um, share my screen with you because there's rather a nice picture on my screen of this little chap. And if you look at him, I tried it yesterday. And if you look at him for long enough, you feel really quite dozy. So any animal will actually help you. So welcome everybody to Live Well With Air. This is, the, this is my Thursday morning slot of 11 o'clock. And this week I'm talking about the subject of sleep, which is so important to all of us. And to have a good night's sleep, uh, what we want to do is to be able to get to sleep, be able to stay asleep, and be able to wake up in the morning feeling refreshed. And I think that's all that people really want from it. Um, but it's so difficult for some people. I'm a health and learning coach. I'm not a sleep scientist and I'm not a doctor, uh, but I do want to pass on to you some of the stuff that I found out about that really works um, and that not um, necessarily other people aren't um, necessarily talking about. The first thing I would say is that it's really useful to learn to sleep when you're young. Um, sleeping can be such a challenge when you get older and maybe you've tried all the usual things for you and your child, but one of the, the first thing I'm gonna do is give you three topics that you probably have never heard of. Um, one is sleep cycles, which is really important to know about. The second one is how you breathe and grounding. And the third one is what are you doing when you're awake and how are you keeping yourself busy? Um, and so those are the three topics for me, if you like. Um, the second area is um, I want to show you some NHS slides to give you their approach. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a really nice mindfulness, um, medit very short meditation to see if that will help you. There's, there's some really great stuff in mindfulness. And I'm just going to give you a really short one this morning. And if you can't sleep at night, just um, I'm sure you all know, but you probably might not think about it quite the same way for your children, is if they don't sleep at night, if they've had a disrupted night's sleep, um, it can be hell the next day. And I learned this one the hard way. So that's why I want to talk to you about sleep cycles. And I'm sure most people have tried everything. They've tried routine. They've tried baths, stories, lights on, lights off, no computers for hours before you go to sleep, warm milk, um, and we'll come back to a few of those later on. And this is vital knowledge, not just for your child, but for you as well. And there is no right reaction to any of this. It's just ideas for you to think about and just notice how you're relating to them. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you for joining me. Sleep cycles. Hmm. Ah, sleep cycles. It's not a great picture, so I'm going to explain it to you. Um, firstly, is that we are meant to have something like about eight hours sleep along the bottom line here, although uh, Maggie Thatcher would dis disagree with that uh, back in the day. Um, the next stage is that you go into something called REM sleep. REM sleep is that light, dreamy, eye movement, easily awake type sleep. Um, the, the next level, level one, is just drifting off. And this uh, level one and level two will, cut, um, will last for about five, 15 minutes, something like that. And you're falling asleep your breathing goes down, your heart rate goes down and your body temperature goes down. So you're really preparing for sleep there. And then we get into um, level three and level four, um, which is the rest and recovery, which is so, so important that we need to get into rest and recovery. 
um, for it's more difficult to get there. And if you've got interrupted sleep, you'll keep bouncing back up to the top here. Um, but so this takes a little bit more practice. But when you wake up from ha having had a really deep sleep, you will notice the difference. Um, if you wake up when you're actually in deep sleep, you will probably be extremely disorientated and not knowing what's going on. And if you just think about somebody going to sleep on the sofa, um, what are they? What sort of level of sleep are they in when they try and get up and walk? Um, I, I'm sure everybody who's got children has done this. And you know that sometimes you can wake somebody up and you can get them into bed. Or if they're a baby, you can pick them up and take them to bed, no problem at all. Other times it's hell because they're in this deep sleep, they are disorientated, they don't even know what's going on. So that's this um, was my lifesaver, this picture, when I had a child who woke up approximately every 90 minutes. Oh, there is um, the gap between sleep cycles can be anything from 30 to 90 minutes, something like that. And they, uh, and my child woke up every 30 to 90 minutes continuously all night. So every time he came up to the top of one of these REM cycles, instead of going back to sleep again, he woke up. And so what happens when that's going on, apart from the fact mum gets extremely distressed. Um, so in summary, the, uh, most people need seven to eight hours sleep a night. They do nearly wake up every 90 minutes. And that's the most important thing to understand. If all's okay, you just go straight back to sleep again and you don't remember anything, um, which is the ideal thing that's going on all night. But if something is different in your environment, then you may wake up fully. You may go off and investigate what's going on. Uh, for example, if your pillow has fallen on the floor, uh, you'll wake up because you're, you're not as, as comfortable as you were when you went to sleep. So you look around for your pillow, pick your pillow up, so you've done your investigation and then you can get back to sleep again. Um, if you hear a noise or if there's a fire in the house, it's more than likely to happen when you're, you'll notice when you're in that REM sleep. You may, of course, want to get up and use the bathroom. That's another possibility. And if a child wakes up in one of those um, REM sleeps when they're nearly awake, they are more than likely to cry because it's not it's something is different to when they went to sleep and parents have a lot of problems with children who go to sleep with dummies for example losing the dummy um, people who go to sleep with music on they've lost the music people who go to sleep in their mother's arms that's absolutely lovely and absolutely great but the only problem is you aren't there in the middle of the night when they wake up so they're more than likely to um, have some reaction to that so you've got to keep the environment the same, and that includes you. That is the most important thing. If the environment is the same, the child will just come up to that REM sleep and then go back to sleep again. And preferably try and get them to put themselves to sleep as young as possible. Um, you, that doesn't mean abandoning them. Um, that means going in and saying, you're okay, you're fine. Now you need to go back to sleep again or something like that. But if you wait until they go to sleep, then you're the crutch for them going to sleep and they're getting into the habit and they're gonna do it for years to come. Um, of course, you can have your sleep interrupted by snoring. It could be you snoring, it could be your partner snoring. You could even have sleep apnea when you stop breathing momentarily. And it's at those times are the times when you realize if you've had a bad night's sleep, it's particularly hard to get up in the morning. And lack of sleep affects everything, concentration, mood, basic activities, your immune system. Um, children are likely to get hyperactive rather than uh, drowsy, or they could get really dozy. Um, they can feel really groggy, concentration shot to pieces, all of those things. And so, that's why I talk a lot about um, helping people get into a good night's sleep. And if anybody wants to talk to me after this or ask me questions on 
Facebook, I've got it working over here, um, then you're more than welcome to ask me. Um, learning to nose breathe, I've been talking about this ever since lockdown started on these calls. Nose breathing is really important. Look at that little baby there. And I can remember doing this when my child went to sleep, any of them, and there was a little tiny snoring coming from them. I thought it was great. I knew they were really soundly asleep. No, not now, because what's happening is they're a mouth breather and they're breathing through their mouth and they're not using their nose properly. And if they're breathing through their mouth when they're asleep, they're gonna wake up with a dry mouth and that's gonna wake them up. So if you think of that sleep pattern again, when they come up into REM sleep and they've got a really dry mouth and they might have their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth sort of thing, they're gonna cry. And so the best thing to do is to encourage them, even at a really young age, to just shut their mouths. And apparently um, there was a program about um, the um, Native American tribes where uh, if a mum saw a child sleeping with its mouth open, she would just gently press their lips together. Um, nose breathing gives you a better quality of sleep without a shadow of doubt. It totally works for me. I wake up in the morning feeling great after I've managed to sleep all night with nose breathing. Um, Patrick McGowan, who, I, who wrote The Oxygen Advantage, who I've learned an awful lot from in the last year, says, unless you breathe calmly through your nose at night, you will have no idea what it feels like to have a great night's sleep. And that absolutely happened for me. I'd been a mouth breather for decades. And as soon as I managed to start breathing through my nose all night, I would wake up feeling bright and alive rather than as if I was on another planet. Um, there is a um, free online class about breathing, by the way, from Jen Tiller. If anybody wants the details of that, it's on Monday night at 7.30, um, which uh, she's one of the local practitioners with breathing and she's absolutely great. So just let me know. Um, nose breathing stops you snoring for most people, although some people seem to manage to snore with um, whilst they're nose breathing. And when your mouth is dry in the morning, you can guarantee you're a mouth breather. The next, the third thing I wanted to talk to you about from my, my perspective is a racing mind, which is quite often what stops people getting to sleep in the first place. It might not wake them up, but it gets stops them getting to sleep. Um, now, some people can have, some people who are highly visual, um, which means that they've got a lot of mental images in their head, head, sorry, mental images in their head, which is what I talked about, I think it was two weeks ago when I was talking about visualizing. Um, if you've got a lot of mental images in your head, you can be really busy. Um, and what you need to do is to start slowing down those pictures before you get to bed. Um, of course, you can have nasty pictures and you can even have night terrors where people are too scared to go to sleep. Um, and what you can do is talk to people about their images. And I do this quite a lot with waking images, is if somebody, for example, has got, is frightened of somewhere they're gonna go, like a new school or something like that. And I ask them, well, what pictures have you got? And they've got all these scary pictures that they don't like. And I go, okay, let's, you're, you're really good at pictures. Let's change those to all really nice pictures so they can visualize really nice pictures of what the days are going to be like in school and what the, the other kids are gonna be like and what the teachers are gonna be like. And by the time you finish doing that, they are, they're feeling a lot better and will be happier to go to sleep. Some people are running nice ones. Um, one of my kids who is highly visual, um, used to, when she was a kid, run, um, Walt Disney videos before she went to sleep. Now, I thought that was a bit overwhelming because she could actually watch six at a time, um, but she thought it was absolutely great and it put her to sleep and she's always been a good sleeper. Um, there is another one which may be, a, 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 may be just that I do this, is that I've been watching a TV drama, which is normally a whodunit. And if I don't think it's correct, 
then I will rerun scenes of it in my imagination and make sure that they had proper continuity for it to be correct. I don't think it's the best thing to do to try and get to sleep. I'm just explaining to you some of the things that people do. And I, after I've done that for a few minutes, I go, enough's enough. It was okay, that film. Um, good ideas. If you have good ideas when you're trying to get to sleep, for goodness sake, um, give yourself a notepad by the side of the bed, wake yourself up enough to write them all down, even if they, it's hardly legible and you can deal with it tomorrow. Whether or not you get back to dealing with it tomorrow is irrelevant actually. And the, the key thing for getting your mental images under control is grounding. And I talked about grounding last week. So, be, so do go back to last week's talk on grounding, how you can just drop into your body and feel comfortable. Um, they're all up on Facebook. So I said, yeah, they are up on Facebook. They're also up on YouTube. And so, and, and YouTube, if you don't know it, there's a YouTube channel for Active in Redbourne. And if you go on there, you can, there are playlists sorted by um, date. So week one, two, three, four, five, six. And there is a playlist sorted by people. So you can go back and look at any of mine or any of Gemma's on um, uh, supple strength or any of the yoga ones, whatever you want to watch. Um, and so that's what I would recommend you do for grounding. Um, the other thing that isn't on this slide is read something short. If, you, if you're the sort of person that gets really into a book and wants to carry on and carry on reading it, for goodness sake, don't try reading that if you can't sleep. You're much better off, and I do this, is I have a magazine which happens to be called Breathe. Um, and it's got short articles, two pages at a time, something like that. And so I don't get hooked into reading a whole book. I just read an article. And because they're really gentle articles, I normally start yawning and feeling a bit more tired. And eventually I get to the end of the article, shut the magazine, and that's it, I'm asleep. Um, the grounding, um, Oh, I should, should have mentioned on grounding, I also talked on last week about earthing, which is exactly the same thing. I think it's the American term for it. And I was talking about a book by um, three guys, Oba, Sinatra and Zuka, who was a cable TV man, a cardiologist and a natural health guy. And they published a book called Earthing. And they talk about all sorts of really important health reasons why you should feel earthed when you're asleep. What well, they do when you're awake as well. But when you're asleep, you can uh, purchase products such as a grounding mat. And so that what that's doing is grounding your body's electrical currents in a similar way to the way we're grounding the, uh, our buildings and our electrical currents. And so that's a really useful resource if you're interested in it. And for people who've really struggled to um, get to sleep, sometimes it absolutely works, but don't take my word for it. Investigate for yourself and make sure you're not doing anything which is detrimental to your health. Um, and of course, the other thing is if you're doing nose di diaphragmatic breathing, you're gonna increase the oxygenation in your brain, which is gonna remove your hyperactivity, which is gonna slow down your pictures. So it's all good stuff, it all works together. So let me now turn over to the, some of the material from the National Health Service. And the way they look at um, a cycle is the follows. Um, I point of fact, I'll bring all these up. So if you've got trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. Think about the messages that you're saying to yourself. And if you've got unhelpful thinking, and there's lots of unhelpful thinking, if I don't sleep now, I'll feel awful in the morning. Well, it's true, but if you don't need to keep telling yourself that message, you can also be telling yourself, I can't sleep. You can say, I want to be able to sleep. Um, or what could you say to yourself, which might encourage you to actually do what you want. So we assume you want to go to sleep. So what about some messages in your brain that um, I'm falling asleep? I'm feeling more relaxed. I'm sinking into the mattress. I'm sinking into the pillow. Everything's feeling 
more relaxed. Those are much better messages to, uh, to give yourself because we do like to be right. If we tell ourselves I can't sleep, then we like to be right and we won't be able to sleep. So try giving yourself some really good positive messages. Whatever you fancy, it's up to you. And of course, if we can't get to sleep, we get stressed and frustrated and anxious. And then we get some other poor sleeping habits like clock watching and sleeping pills and sleeping during the day and caffeine to stay awake. And so it all goes around in a circle. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who said actually resting during the day is a really good thing to do. Um, so I'm not saying going to sleep during the day. I'm just saying, you know, take an armchair and just be comfortable for a few minutes, five minutes and just let your whole body relax down. And so what you're doing there is your autonomic nervous system is actually being put into rest. And when you get to bed, then it's a really good habit to have developed. So you can use that when you're trying to get to sleep. Um, according to the NHS, positive sleeping habits are getting a regular routine. Yes, we, we know about that one. Uh, sleep when sleepy, only try and sleep when you're actually feeling tired or sleepy. I think one of the problems with that is that many people don't actually know what it's like to feel sleepy. Um, they spend so much time um, doing things during the day, they don't know what this um, I feel sleepy thing it actually is. So um, I do agree that only go to bed when you feel sleepy, but I think it takes time to develop the sleepy gene, if you like. And then the other thing is that uh, I've heard from many people is don't um, don't toss and turn for ages. Get up after 20 minutes or more. Go and do something calming until you feel sleepy. But again, you've got to know what that feels like. Then return to bed and try again. Um, avoid doing anything that's too stimulating. And you can, um, for example, drink something like chamomile tea that might help you. Um, there is a couple of other things. I mean. It's quite useful to increase, increase melatonin. And one of the things I found, and I'll just pass this on to you, this is what I found for me, was the Vogel um, herb, which is called Dormacin and is available from health shops. And I used to, when I went through a patch of not being able to sleep for one reason or another, I would put 15 drops of that in a small glass of water and I had, it, it used to, it says on the bottle, I think, um, take this half an hour before you go to bed. I found that unless I actually went to bed straight away and I could go to sleep straight away, then I would um, have difficulty um, going to sleep if I left it until half an hour. But that's perhaps that's just me, I don't know. Um, Definitely avoid caffeine and nicotine, which is in coffee, tea and cola drinks. And by the way, decaffeinated coffee and tea is not completely decaffeinated. It's just got less as far as I understand. And so don't take any of those for a few hours before going to bed. They act like stimulants. And um, what you want to do is find something that's either decaffeinated or preferably herbal. Avoid alcohol because most people think that you can get more relaxed with alcohol, but it doesn't give you a great night's sleep. Um, eating right with a balanced diet. Hope you've been listening to Sammy on, uh, when Sammy? On Friday mornings, I think. Um, and uh, to uh, look at your nutrition and activity. Yep, if you increase your activity during the day. Um, and another one from the NHS is Free sleep routine, wind down, of course. Um, ensure the surroundings are supporting your sleep so you haven't got a lot of noise or light or electronic devices. Electronic devices are the ones that people um, normally focus on. Um, I love this. They, they suggest that you have a notepad by your bed that has that you can offload of your mind, which is great. It's important to have a notepad that shuts to contain the offload. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. So you can pick it up again in the morning if needed. Um, use relaxation to help switch off your mind uh, from the continuous work. And even the NHS is saying nose diaphragmatic breathing, which is great. Um, okay, worrying about sleep. 
this is the negative negative self-talk i should be asleep never tell yourself you should be asleep because what are you doing there you're telling yourself off that's the last thing you want to be doing when you're trying to get to sleep um, much better to do something like i'm i am falling asleep just even if it's a lie just keep telling yourself you're falling asleep and with those unwanted thoughts um uh, we can get rid of those by either writing them down or um, but or relaxing enough with something like mindfulness. And mindfulness and meditation, it's become really popular lately. Um, mind, let me give you the definition of mindfulness. The ability to take notice of your internal and external experiences as they unfold in, a, in the present moment and in a non-judgmental way. So with all those busy thoughts that that person walking their dog is going, was going into what they want to, that's called your mind is full of stuff. And on the right hand side is just you're being selective about what you want to be thinking about. Or in that case, I think it's the, what the dog's thinking about and the, um, and what you can let go of. So what you want to do is if you've got thoughts coming in, you want to just let them go rather than get tangled up with trying to sort them out when you're going to sleep. Um, I've, I've signed up for, uh, next week for a mindfulness in everyday life course with the New Leaf College. And it's in Watford, but of course, everything's being done online at the moment. They have loads of different courses. I'd love to hear from anybody who's done any of the New Leaf College courses. They're all free do have a look at them. Um, and if anybody wants to join me on the one that starts on Tuesday morning, I would love to have you there and I would love to have your feedback. Uh, these are a few things that the NHS recommend. And so there's some things that you can do on your phone or your tablet. Uh, and out of these, I personally have Calm on my phone, which is a really lovely app. And I've read some of Mindfulness and I've read the little book on Mindfulness. And sometimes I read to you out of that one. So the last thing for me is what's a good night's sleep look like? Try and work out what it's going to look like for you and your child or and your parents for that matter. Um, keep reminding yourself of what a good night's sleep would be like. Watch the language you tell yourself. None of this, I can't sleep. What you want is I'm gonna have I'm having a good night's sleep, um, and don't forget my three topics of sleep cycles, breathing and grounding, plus knowing what you want, how you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to read you just to finish off. I had a quick look on in the internet, and I found this lovely site called MindfulnessExercises.com. and they've got loads and loads of mindfulness exercises if you ever want to find one. And I'll just read you one that's a really short one about bedtime and going to sleep. So sit back in the chair, breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. And when in this mindfulness exercise, they say deep breaths, they don't mean huge breaths. They mean deep down into your belly so that your diaphragm moves. This bedtime mindfulness guided meditation script is short and best done very slowly while mindfully, mindfully breathing, calm your mind and imbue, rest of your, and imbue the rest of your senses. You may have woven mindfulness practice into your day, but as soon as you lie down and go to bed, you notice your mind begins to race. As you settle down for the evening, the mind may not always read the situation accurately. With the stimuli of daily life over, the mind can seem louder than usual, and demand even more attention. This exercise can be used in the moments to help you, your mind and body to prepare for sleep. So here we go. Stand next to your bed. Take a few deep, that means down into the bottom of your belly, breaths. In through your nose, out through your nose, and right down to the bottom of your belly. Center yourself in the present moment, bringing your awareness to the body as, 
as it is right now. So you're not trying to change anything, just notice how you are at the moment. When you climb into bed, remain aware of what is occurring in your body. As you lie down, feel the body assume the resting position. Use the breath to bring mindfulness to the body and cultivate relaxation. As you breathe in, feel the lungs fill with air, right down to your diaphragm. When you exhale, feel the body soften into the mattress. Picture yourself falling deeper into the mattress as the body relaxes with each exhale. Start a body scan at the top of your head, moving down your body to your toes. As your attention rests on each part, relax it, soften into the bed with every exhale. When you reach your toes, return to the body as a whole and the practice of breathing deeply and continue softening. So a very short exercise. And thank you for joining me. Um, it's a delight to have you here. And I should say good night. Next week, I'll be, work, I'll be in conversation with Mike Cannell talking about the immune system and what you can do to support it. So please come back and join me then. In the meantime, good night to everybody.